If you're a beginner to Final Cut Pro 10 and you just do not know where to start, then this is the perfect video for you. I'm going to show you how to take your footage off your SD card or your phone and get it onto your computer so that you can start editing in Final Cut Pro. I'll teach you how to stay organized and back up your footage so that you never lose anything important. We'll also take a look at the software and show you around a bit so that when you start editing, things are a bit more familiar and it's a lot easier for you. You got to just press record. Hey guys, my name is Normal with Think Media. Now let's get right into this video. Now, before we even open up Final Cut Pro, we do want to get our footage, whether that's on an SD card or your phone, onto your computer. So if you do have an SD card, which looks like this, you can plug that into your computer. If your computer does not have an SD card slot, you can get an adapter. We'll have links for all these resources in the description down below. If you have something like an iPhone, you can actually airdrop it straight onto your computer, but you want to stay organized. So we're going to create a folder on our desktop right here, and I actually have an SD card. So this is my SD card right here. I'll go into DCIM and right here I have some Fuji footage. Over here in just on my computer in my movies folder, I have Think Media videos and I'm going to create a brand new folder and we're going to title this uh, Final Cut Tutorial. Obviously for your name, you can name it whatever you'd like. Uh, that's easy to remember for the project that you are working on. At this point, we are going to select the footage from our SD card, which is over here. I'm going to hold down shift after selecting the top one and then select the bottom one. I'm going to drag drag that over my final cut tutorial. Up here we get this loading bar. It's going to take a few minutes to copy all our videos over onto our folder and then up next we are going to import that into Final Cut Pro 10. The reason I like to do this is kind of as a backup. So having the actual videos on your computer, if something does go wrong and you happen to lose your footage somehow or you accidentally delete it, then you still have those original files on the SD card and you can easily relink those inside the software. So that's why I like to always copy my footage onto my computer first, or you can use something like a Samsung T5 hard drive and you can edit straight off of that. But to keep things simple, we're just going to keep everything on the computer. All right. Now that our videos are in our folder, we can actually open up this folder, make sure they're all in there. And what we can do too is make a new folder and we can title this videos. And that way, maybe when we download some music and we want to add that into our project, we can always come back to this folder. We can make a new folder called music. We can put all our music in here. We can do the same for images, maybe one for B-roll and A-roll if you want to separate your videos, but this keeps everything organized. And that's what I do for my projects is I have different folders for all my assets in the video. So having those folders really keeps me organized. If I ever go back to that project, I don't have missing files. So it's definitely something you want to get in the habit of doing. Now let's open up Final Cut Pro 10. If you just downloaded it or installed it, or if you want to, you can get a 90 day free trial. We'll have a link in the description. When you first install it, you're going to want to go down here and open up your launch pad on your launch pad. You are going to see your app somewhere over here. Mine is on the second page right here. And if you want to bring it down here, you just can drag it and this will put it inside of this little dock. So that way it's easy to access. You can just go down here and hit final cut pro and double tap it. And this is going to open up the software. Now this is what it looks like when you first open it up. And the first step to do to import our footage is create a library. On this left side over here, we see that this is where a library would go, but since we don't have one, we're going to go to file. We're going to go to new and we're going to select library for the name. I just like to leave it as the same name as my project. So I'll just do, you know, final cut tutorial. It doesn't even have to be the same. It doesn't really matter, but to keep organized, we are going to place it in the same folder. So in movies and think media videos, I'm going to add final cut tutorial and I'm just going to put it inside of this folder. We'll hit save. And now if I go back to that folder, you are going to see that we have a library right here. This library is going to hold everything. So if you ever need to get back in there and edit, you can actually go right in here. You can double click this and it's going to open up that library with the videos that you have in there. Right here is where you have an event and this is where you're going to upload some of that footage. We click on it once we can rename it and we are just going to call this Fuji footage and that way I can upload all my Fuji footage in here and it's really easy to know that this is where my Fuji footage is. With that selected, we're going to hit import media and this is going to open up our media import tab. I'm going to find my footage by going to Nolan Molt, then going to movies and then think media videos. Right here is my final cut tutorial and if I select that it's actually just going to import everything inside of this folder. Obviously the library can't be imported but I do have my video in there so I'm just going to select that and then over here we have a lot of options on this right hand side. We can see right here that it's going to add to our existing event Fuji footage which we just made and then as far as 
those files go, you want to leave files in place. If you copy to the library, your library is gonna get very large and I actually just like to keep everything separate and in my own folders. And so this is the way I do it to stay organized. If you copy it to the library, you can do that as well, but things seem to be a bit less organized when I do that. As far as keywords go, we can leave both of those checked and then for analyze video, I like to leave both of these unchecked. For transcode under optimized media, if you have some weird file sizes, this is going to make it more compatible with Final Cut Pro by making it a ProRes file, or you can create proxy medias, which is what I like to use. So if you have a slow computer, you can create a proxy media, and basically it's a low resolution file size, and so it's a lot smaller files, and they run a lot faster on your computer, and then you can sub those out when you start editing, and then when you go to export your final project, you basically replace your high res, whether it's 4K or just even 1080, and then your final edit is going to have those original files back in place, but it makes the editing so much easier and so much faster, especially if you have a slow computer. So I'm gonna select create proxy media, and for my codec, ProRes proxy is gonna work fine. H.264 will work as well, but I like to use the ProRes proxies. Frame size, I'm gonna leave at 50%. And after that, we're just gonna hit import all. Now we can see that we have footage inside of Final Cut Pro, and up here we have a loading bar. So if we select this, this is actually going to show us the background tasks that are happening. Right now there is transcoding and analysis. That just means that it's creating the proxy files for us. If we click this down, it's transcoding, making the proxy clips for each of these clips right now. Now, as that runs in the background, we can carry on. Now, in order to start editing, we need a project. So events are kind of what carries your music, your pictures, your videos, and your project is your edit. It's where the videos and all the files will go into. You'll mess around with them, and that project is what you'll export. And again, the library is what holds everything. To create a new project, we'll go to File, New, and select Project. For our project name, I'll just name it Final Cut Tutorial. It's going to be in the event Fuji footage, which is perfect for me. And for video, I'm gonna leave it at 4K, but if you shot in 1080, then hit 1080p HD. But for me, mine is in 4K, and this is the correct resolution. For frame rate, I actually shot in 23.98 frames per second. Uh, rendering, codec, all this stuff is fine. Color space is fine, audio, all that stuff stuff you won't need to touch. From there, you'll hit OK, and right up here, you'll now see we have a project. Also down here, we can now move this playhead because we have a project, and this is our project timeline. This is where we are going to edit everything. Back up here in the events where we have our videos, you can see we can scrub through here and this is going to allow us to view this footage even before we add it to our project. If you scrub over your video and hit the space bar, this is actually going to play it for you. So let's say, all right, this is the clip I want to use. You can either select it once and drag it into your timeline or let me delete that. Now let's say you just want to use the second half of this clip. You can actually drag this and just bring down that second half of the clip or what you could do is just bring the entire clip down and trim it down here while it's already in the timeline. If you hold down shift, you can select all your clips and just throw those in the timeline and uh, edit it from there. I do this a lot of the time, I just throw them all in and then I start editing inside of my project. With some videos on the timeline, if you select one of these clips, over here we have our effects. So if this is not popping up yet, you can click this button right here and that's gonna bring up your effects. If you wanna add it transition, you can actually click this one and this is going to be your transitions and it's as simple as dragging and dropping. So let's say we wanna use this cross dissolve. I'll drag this over the second clip and right now it's gonna say there's not enough extra media. Just hit create transition and this is going to transition a cross dissolve between the two clips. And if you want to delete that, you can just select your transition and hit delete, and that's going to get rid of that transition. Back over here on effects, you can do the same thing. You can drag an effect right here, and now you have a 50s TV effect. And if you want to delete an effect, you can select your clip. Up here in the right-hand corner, this is your properties. Right now at the top, we see effects. We can just select 50s TV and delete that. So over here on the right-hand side, this is all your information about your clip or maybe your audio. So you can see over here, we can mess with our opacity. We can change that. Uh, transform is like the positioning, and so you can move that around. You can also scale your image by dragging the slider, or you can select the scale, and maybe you wanna make it 200%. You can do that as well. Now what I like to do, what I think is a lot easier, is right down here, we have this little drop-down menu. You can do a transform tool, 
And this is your scale right here. You can move the positioning around. You can scale it up or down, you know, do whatever you want to do with that. To reset this, all you got to do is go back up here and hit reset. And that's going to put everything back to normal for your transform tool. If we change this to crop, this allows us to crop in on an image or crop out on an image and trim allows you to actually trim off an image. So if you want to make it more of a square image, add something else in there, you know, you can do that with trim. Another important thing to look at on this viewer window is this percentage right here. So we have the 70%. If we want to make that 50%, this actually isn't changing the scale or anything like that. It's just changing the size of it inside of our software. So if I want to make this as big as possible for this window, I would just hit fit and that is going to fit it in here. So as I move these around, if I want to make this bigger, this is just automatically going to make it smaller for me or make it bigger if I make the window bigger. So to recap, down here is where we are going to edit our project. Up here is all of our videos. So to actually get these onto your project, you have to bring them down into the timeline, but this is where they all are. So if I delete some of these, they are still gonna be up here. They're not on the project, they're not on the final video, but it's not like I'm deleting them out of the software. If I want to put them back in, I can by just dragging it back onto the timeline. Over here, we have our event as well as our library, and you can create new events if you want to. Maybe you have like a part two or day two and you wanna separate the day Days, uh, you could do that by just naming it day two and then you have a brand new event so if you see no footage you might be on the wrong event you need to go to a different event where you have your project you have your other footage but this also allows you to organize things inside of Final Cut if that makes it easier for you typically I just keep everything inside of one event so that's the basics that's what you need to know to kind of get started and get familiar with Final Cut if you want to learn how to start editing for beginners then click on the screen right now and I'll see you guys in the next video